And before I address that question, I want to talk about hell. What's up with this thing that's called hell? Now, in the traditional view, at least since the 5th century, most theologians, not all, but most theologians throughout history have held that hell is eternal conscious suffering. It, it, it's endless torment. Uh, God holds these people in existence not to teach them a lesson or to redeem them or to have them learn anything. He holds them in existence for the sheer purpose of getting even, to have them experience exquisite pain. And the way it's been portrayed throughout most of the church tradition has been that it involves fire. It's like being burned alive, but you never die. You just are perpetually being burned alive. It's torture. Now, that view is based mostly on six verses in the New Testament that speak about eternal damnation or eternal punishment. One is found in 1 Thessalonians. Paul says that uh, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, there's an intentional rejection there. They refuse to obey the gospel. And then he says, they will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord. Everlasting destruction. And so in the traditional view, this has been taken to mean that they're eternally, unendingly in the process of being destroyed and suffering excruciating pain in the process. I, I remember when I first heard this teaching. I was in second grade, a little Catholic boy in Catholic school in second grade. And the priest came in, and whenever the priest came in to do a teaching, you know it was serious. Uh, it was either going to be about sex or hell. I went through the, the, the nuns did the rest, but on the tough stuff, the, the priest would come in. Father Chalky, and he gave this teaching on hell, and it was graphic, and it was lured, and it was absolutely nightmarish. And I, for the next year or so, maybe longer than that, at the age of seven, had a recurring nightmare about this. Terror, terrible nightmare. It, it was always the same. I was in the mouth uh, of this volcano. Okay, inside the mouth of this volcano, and there's this little ledge that went around the mouth of this volcano, and you could barely stand on it. You know, it wasn't even as big as your feet, so you're trying to balance up against this, the, the, this wall. And beneath us, maybe 100, 200 yards, is this boiling lava, and there's people fleeing around in there, screaming bloody murder, just screaming, ter just terrible, uh, as they're fleeing around in this hot molten lava. And we're trying to keep from falling into it, and smoke is rising out of the volcano, uh, uh, up between us. And there's all these people on this ledge, Join joining me. And I, in this nightmare, saw Satan. Of course, being seven, I saw Satan as this red figure with horns and hoofs and a pitchfork. And, and he was floating around the, the parameter of this volcano. And he, and he had this wicked giggle as he, was, he would kind of toy with us to, to cause us to lose our balance. And once in a while, he screamed this terrible, wicked scream as he would push somebody into the lava. They'd fall in there screaming all the way down, and then fall in the lava, and then they'd be flaying around like the rest of the people. It was terrifying. And the nightmare would always end with the devil coming right up to me and, 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 and looking me in the face with this wicked, evil face, these wicked eyes, with this wicked giggle. And he starts, like, bumping me, you know, toying with me. And I'm screaming, just terrified, and that's how I'd wake up. And I'd wake up in a cold sweat. I'd sometimes wake up wetting the bed. I was so terrified. And the only way I could go back to sleep was by praying a ton of Hail Marys. You know, just uh, trying to get a little peace in this. I don't think it's the best strategy for, for teaching a kid how to love Jesus. Uh, didn't quite have that effect. And you wonder why I'm so screwed up now? Well, that, that's why. It, it's, I, seven year olds, I don't think, should have to dream dreams like that. But the question then is is that true? Or is, is anything like that true? Now, here's the thing. At Woodland Hills, we don't have a doctrine about this because the things that we want to agree on are only those core things that we need to get the job done, the job being building the kingdom. And so we don't try to micromanage everything here. So this is one of those things we think people can come to reasonable different conclusions. We interpret Scripture differently. We can have different opinions. Uh, so what we're going to share here is not the official view of Woodland Hills Church. I'm just going to share my view, which, as you know, is the right view, but uh, it's just my view. So... Don't feel you have to agree with this, um, but just, just consider. I'm going to give you four reasons why I don't think that is the correct view of hell. 